which means that if you translate essentially, means commit not a single unwholesome action. means a cultivated wealth of virtue. To tame this mind of ours, to tame this mind of ours, this is the teaching. This is the basis in which that each of life, Dikpachyo Mijayashi is the basis of the Theravada, Inaya. Gyawapusun Sokwache is the basis of Mahayana. Ramasana is the basis of Vajra. Three way to that. In fact, the entire teaching of Buddha is all the time you will take your ass uh, and body and body. And so, my master is going to get to all the things that are made. But the main thing is first time is, as much as possible to abandon all negative, harmful action, body, speech, mind, which are cause of suffering not only for others but for yourself. Basically it means don't harm. Don't harm. Great Tibetan lamas all say, Mil Penta Matu Nayan, no materialist. If you cannot help people, at least don't harm. Don't keep semba nabo majes. Don't keep malice and hatred in your heart. Semba nabo majes. Semba zambu chepogres. Semba zana satan lana. So semba mena satan lana. The gentleman not always sees all that, but I had the honor to actually uh, be part of these holidays with the first visit to uh, the West in 1973. On those occasions, he's always with teacher. My religion is very simple, my religion is kind, always good up, kind. That's why, you know, the Atisha, the Bhaktar, he always asks me, people ask, you know, normally people say, how are you, how's your cat, how's your dog, how's your health? He never asks, how are you? Probably he might say, he always asks, how is your good heart? How is good heart? We all have good heart, but we must not forget that. We must always, you know, be kind. And as Master said, if you cannot help, at least don't, don't help. Don't keep malice in your heart. And keep your heart and mind pure. In fact, also when we died, the great Master Ugyanamacha, Guru Mach advised at the moment of death, let go of attachment aversion. Keep your heart and mind pure. Unite your mind with the wisdom of Buddha, which is power, and the rest of the nature of mind. So that, but the most important thing is third line, Ranga Semni Buddha. In fact, great masters always say, the entire teaching of Buddha is summed up, summed up in this one statement by the Buddha, Ranga Semni Buddha. Rang means oneself, Sem means mind or heart, Yus means thoroughly or completely, Dul means subjugate, tame, or conquer. And if you don't like those words, you can say transform. In fact, he's only the dilemma. More recently, he's always been saying, what is Buddhism? Buddhism is about transforming the mind. Rangasen. And they say, Rangasen means tame your mind, not tame others' mind. Mind your business. Normally what we do is we can see a small speck of dust in somebody, fault in others, but we don't see even a big yak before in our own eyes. Never judge. With themselves, only someone like I and I only can see. So never judge. Always keep a pure mind. Always pure. Even if somebody, somebody say, you don't have to. You keep your mind pure. It's very important to keep your mind pure. In fact, great master Jamaica Chudori said, aside from the pure and impure state of mind, there's no one who binds us or set us free. If your mind is pure, it's nirvana. If your mind is impure, it's samsara. Everything depends on the mind. Mind is universal ordering principle, creator of happiness, creator of samsara. And creator of, creator of happiness, creator of suffering, creator of what we call samsara, creator of what we call nirvana is the mind.
And that's one of the reasons why Buddha said all fear and anxiety come from an untamed mind. I mean, President Roosevelt said, only thing to fear is the fear itself. But Buddha said a little bit further, only thing to fear is your untamed mind. Because a true practitioner of Dharma knows that whatever happens, circumstances, takes responsibility. I mean, for example, you know, whatever happens, difficulty arises, is as Buddha said, all fear has had to come from, to work with the mind. If you work with the mind, particularly if you want happiness, happiness does not exist objectively. In other words, all rich people have bought it. No, that's not it. Whether you like it or not, it's subject to one's experience. We have to work with the mind. So in order to work with the mind, is the mind training, mojong. If you work with the mind, the wonderful thing, I was one of the great masters, the Kadamba masters, who said that one of the most wonderful qualities of mind that it can always transform. He's always, always quote that. So that mind is wonderful. We can always, you know, change and transform. So there's always hope. Even though we are sometimes, his own Dalam always says, we are good, but our actions are wrong. We are good. It's fundamentally in the Buddha, especially in the teachings in Mahamudra, Chaja Chamber in Bhutan, and Phokho Chamber in Bhutan, they believe very much is as the first human Dokshin Master, Garam Dokshin said, mind is and has always been the Buddha. Mind, true nature is the Buddha. As Buddha said in the Heva Jostantra, all sentient, sentient and sentient, the original world to me, all sentient beings are Buddhas, but yet they are obscured by adventist things. One this obscuration of indeed, then, you know, so therefore the obscuration, marik, but jiva, like the cloud that obscure, but our true nature is the Buddha. That's why what you do purify is ordinary mind. Through meditation, through devotion and prayer, through loving kindness and compassion, the most important through nature, my sentinelu tone, overcome our delusory mind and realize the Buddha mind. That's why in our tradition, like Bhutan, even the Tibetans, all the practitioners, you know, when you go, when you reach a certain level, even monks and nuns, they have accomplished Munro and others, then they go to the great master saying, please give us a sempsi, give us a sempsi, give us a guidance to the nature of mind. And I was very fortunate to be the Dujun Bhutan's translator. He was a great master of introducing the nature mind. Incredible. Another great master, Tubuya. And I found every day for many years as serving in my translator in the nature mind all over the world. And through the blessing, whatever I accomplished, the book, the best book of living time, is actually a blessing of the whole world. The main thing you have to go to do take care of your mind. Saying in the Lojong, it was a training mindset. In all my actions, may I examine them. Whenever a negative thought is described, you should engage in myself and others as a positive patient. If you're aware of the awareness, whenever a negative thought is described, you're aware of that. If you're aware, of that, if you're aware then you will not uh, do it. To be able to prevent. If you're not aware, mindlessly, then you go, then you commit negative habits. As his old Dalama often says, do not sacrifice long-term benefit for short-term pleasure. That means we do negative things, like, you know, sometimes if your girlfriend or your wife is in bed with somebody, then out of anger and fit of jealousy, you take a knife and go stab. It gives you a temporary pleasure, but then your whole life is ruined. Always while drinking, a little bit is okay, not too much, not gambling. One of the most important is avoid drugs. There's no good. In fact, if you do practice meditation, it brings the same kind of bliss that no other drugs can bring. You should really look after yourself. You understand? Look after yourself. Look after yourself. Look after yourself. Look after your mind. Because if you don't care for yourself, who care for you? And you should love yourself. In the West, don't get the 
bad ideas. People in the West hate themselves. That's really stupid. I remember I was with the Zolinus at a conference when people said in the West they hate themselves. He was only stunned, even though he understood English quite well. He didn't kill them. They, they, they hate themselves. That idea is completely because we should love ourselves. As Buddha said, if you look all over the world, someone more worthy of your love than yourself, you will not find another. He who loves himself will not harm another. Meaning, who he loves himself in a good way. We all deserve love, a good love, not neurotic love. You know? Love ourselves. Then, he who loves himself will not harm another. In the world, people who do not love on themselves, then they harm others. Like they're shooting each other, gunning, and it's a lack of love. You can see in the world all about lack of love. You should let and his own Dhanam often says, when I practice compassion, people think compassion is for something for others, not for your own service. That's a mistaken view. From my little experience, he said, when I practice compassion, how much others benefit, I do not know, maybe 50%. But the real benefit of practice compassion is myself. When you practice compassion, your heart and mind are filled with love. As he says by Shakespeare in Merchant of Venice, his quality of mercy is doubly blessed. It's blessed him that gives him that receives. So in the same manner, when you practice compassion, loving kindness, you're filled with love. He says he feels makes me more secure and connect with his fundamental goodness than kindness, compassion will come. So very much when you practice compassion and love, then you just generate this heart of compassion to others. You understand? And love yourself. And if you don't know love yourself properly, you know the Christians say, love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, if you don't know how to love yourself, then you're loving your neighbor, you know, probably should say, no, thank you. Yeah, so very much that learn to be kind to yourself. Learn to connect with your fundamental needs. And you, as good needs to bad and see don't get distracted. Do little practice. Do little bit of meditation. Of course, in the East, Buddha, meditation only for the Gong Chen and realize. We, we just learn it. But in the chaotic world of the West, neurotic world of the West, there is very much a lot of mental confusion. You're sitting quietly. As the great master say, this is very famous. I give you a short teaching. I mean, very important point. It is said very beautiful. I find this in many of the Dzogchen instructions. He says, Chu manyuk na tang, chu manyuk na tang, sunda, chu manyuk na tang, sem machina de, you know, chu is water, manyuk is we don't stir it, na means den, tang means will be clear, so water if you don't stir it will become clear. Now, in the same manner, two many of the time, it's very evocative, very evocative. Just as water, if you don't stir it, it will become clear. In the same manner, same machina, same machina. Same is mind for heart. Machu meaning, it's a wonderful word, machupa. Machupa, when you translate rough into English, it's called unaltered, unaltered. Unaltered is when you leave your mind in its own natural state without any manipulation or contrivance. The trouble with us is we never leave our mind alone. We always manipulate and contrive. In fact, one great authority of mental health in the West said that Rinpoche told me that the root cause of all the mental problems is too much thinking. So therefore, what the Master said, just as water, if you don't stir it, in the same manner, it's like not stirring your mind, leaving your mind completely unaltered, in its own natural state, without any contrivance, or without any fabrication. When you leave your mind naturally in its own, then we can to leave your mind unaltered in the state of equipoise. When you leave it this way, then slowly it will, it will, arrive at its true nature, the peace of mind. Just as a muddy water, glass of muddy water, if you don't stir it, it becomes clear, the same manner. So very much, 
Chu manyuk natam sunda. Chu manyuk natam sema. Remember this. Water, water, if you don't stir it, will become clear. In the same manner, mind up unknown. A little bit, be spacious. Then we can have a shrine with the image of Buddha. I give you that Guru Mbache, Guru Nandam. This is amazing. This Guru Mbache is called Guru Nandama. Very famous. It was in Tibet during the time when he built the first great monastic university center called Samye. And it was made by a sculptor who made and looked at Guru Mbache and it made it and when it was being made Guru Mbache looked at it said oh this looks like me Nandamuduka so the name became Nandamuduka but then later when it was finished completed and they said oh and he blessed it this is the same as me I remember when I was young I went with my master Jamma Ken Shushwari there and he did one month practice he gave extraordinary teaching there it's extraordinary but the only thing, the four images destroyed during the Cultural Revolution. Only thing that survived this photograph, taken by a uh, very, uh, this, uh, from uh, this thing, Ragasha, a very Arabic family from Tibet, whose daughter was married to the king of Sikkim. And she took a photograph of this. And she was very kind to me, gave me the negative, which I restored. And when I first discovered this photo, and I just kept it at the, you know, first I just saw this photo, you know, it just completely captured me. Because there's a tremendous presence, poise and grace. If you like, almost let yourself into this photo. Let your mind enter into Guru Bhutia. And there's an incredible grace, you know grace, Boys. And then when you, the face of Guru Mbuchi is really for meditation. It brings mindfulness and awareness. And the eyes are for Dzogchen practitioner. Mam brings the nature of mind very much. Whenever I see the eyes, I remember the cancer of Mbuchi, Dujun Mbuchi, introducing me to the nature of mind. So this is, using this as an object, is especially when you know this is something that really blessed by Guru Mbuchi is the most holy image of Guru Mbuchi in Tibet. Now, as they know, through many research that we done in the university, like, like uh, Wisconsin, others, they write that very experienced meditation teachers who have practiced for over 10,000 hours. In that, there's a definite change in the brain. Part of the brain that form negative emotions are down, and part of the thing that may positive emotions are lit up. Not only when they practice, but even they're not practicing, they're permanently, meaning that their brain is permanently damaged, they always have it. But then they show, research team show that not only the 10,000 you can do, but if you practice even 20 minutes for two months, it has definite change in the mind that creates happiness and well-being. And also, it actually uh, helps with the immune system. It's good for the heart and also for blood pressure and remove stress, over, able to remove stress hormones and able to cope with even stressful environments and it will help to develop more concentration. These are four. Even if you don't practice for the for the benefit of others, at least for your well-being. Because in this day and age, there are all kinds of illnesses. So prevention is better than a cure. So we should really look after your mind, eat well, so look after yourself, okay? Take care of yourself and really learn the Dharma. It will help your mind. And the most important is help others. As in Dalama often says, when you just Think of yourself only. When you're selfish and just thinking of yourself, then what happens? You get caught up in this cosmophobic self in which you not only end up not being happy, but you always shirk responsibility, blame others, you know? And happiness 
unhappiness which is continually putting. Whereas on the other hand, you work for the benefit of others. Amazingly, your own welfare is taken care of. So one of the best way to is help others. Helping others is a way that will actually that way look at all the stars, Angelina Jolie, even that uh, uh, Nescafe man. What's his name? George Tukuni. All these people work with well. Because when you become wealthy and this thing, it's all impermanent, you know. One day you're drinking drugs, all these things bring you only depression, sadness. So when you start working for the people, benefit of others, then it's good for the soul. Helping others, really. That's why if you help others, it will help you. If you harm others, it will harm you. In fact, when you harm others, one, you're most harming yourself and yourself. That's why I'm very impressed with Jesus. When he died on the cross, he said, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. Meaning, when people crucified him, they had no idea. When people harm you, they have no idea. They think they harm you, but one they're harming themselves is themselves, most. That's why the great compassion masters, even those who harm you, they have more compassion for them because they really feel, you know, they forgive them. So very really much compassion, loving kind, good heart. And as Tibetans, Bhutanese, others, everybody in the society thinks you're a good person. So you should do Chaba Zambo, behave well, and to be kind, don't lose your special value. So wherever you go, you touch me. Be kind. And really, you know, you give kind of blessing. Good heart, good kindness. And the children also teach them. Got it? So that's the re reply to the toast. Because it's important to, you know, otherwise, it's, it's, I mean, I'm coming here for a purpose. And I know goodness people, Tibetan people want a blessing. Actually, blessing is in the teachings. Really, blessing is in the teachings. You should follow the teachings. Thing is that the on money payment, there are many things practice you can do. If you do the practices, I remember Kandra Sinchura used to say, if you have a good heart and pure heart, have you do practice, it's the same as anybody practices as power. Buddhas are not biased. Whoever, Buddha himself said, whoever invokes me, I'll be there, granting blessings to God. So therefore we can practice. Because what is the meaning of Om Mani Pemimu? It represents the, all the negative emotions, anger, desire, ignorance, all the, which are the cause of six realms, Doha Ritukcha, which are the heart, the mind of people, to purify them through the seat of the compassion of the great compassion, but all of you, which you see, Om Mani Pemimu, think. You consider in the sky before you, embodiment of all Buddhas, and the person for me is Guru Mbachi. For others is Papa Chandra. They're the same. They're actually the same family. In the Lotus family of the Buddhas. The Pramoji Buddha, Chuku, is Baba. Lungku Sambokai is Avalokiteshwar, Papa Chandra. Chuku, Guru Mbachi. They're the same. But for me, Guru Mbachi really is for me the embodiment of compassion, blessing, both. So I always invoke Guru Mbache. In him is all my masters and bodies. In, in that, he is your Dalai Lama, the Bukhansa, Mr. Dujun, Mr. Jamit, all my masters and bodies. There's a saying in Tibet, in the Dokshin teaching, Jarwa Kham Ti Khe Long Ti Khe. All Buddhas are in wisdom nature one. All in body. You invoke in the sky before you. And then you, from the depth of your heart, you say, please purify all my negative karma. To stop emotions. You can think of the deceased people, dying people, yourself also. Then you can say, Oma Humbanzan Gurpamasidam, which is the heart essence of Guru Bhakti. Next year, by the way, is Guru Bhakti's year. Next year is Guru Bhakti's year. You should concentrate on Guru Bhakti. Mandam Gurpamasidam. Focus on that. And then you can also do Omani Pemos, Papa Chenrisi. In the case of Papa Chenrisi, like Tibetan, you can consider Alok Chenrisi, same as Kunishi Dhamma. 
and so manifest from the depth of your heart and pray for yourself too. And then you can do from Baba Jaina to your Guru Mishra. From a rays of light go. You know, three lights. From Om Ahu, white, red. From rays of three lights come. And the touch is up. Purify all the negative karma, body, speech, and mind. Grant us the empowerment of one. All grant us the blessing of the body, speech, mind of Guru Mishra. At the end, Guru Mishra dissolves and becomes one with you. And then he dissolves one with you. Then you rest in the nature of Guru Mishra, in the oneness in that which is meditation. Which is also power. When you die, most importantly, is you unite your mind with Guru Mishra. That is essential.